Construction of insurance warranties. A search for meaning isn't always easy. Marine insurance warranties are term of an insurance contract by which the insured undertakes that some particular thing shall or shall not be done, or that some condition shall be fulfilled, or whereby the existence of a particular state of fact is affirmed or denied. The rationale behind warranties is that the insurer only accepts the risk provided that the warranty is fulfilled. It was settled in Bank of Nova Scotia versus Hellenic Mutual War Risk Association, Bermuda LTD, 1992, that breach of warranty would bring the risk to an end automatically as from the time of breach. The unique characteristic of an insurance warranty is that it has to be strictly complied with and the breach of it doesn't need to be causative of the loss or material to the risk before the insurer is discharged from liability. Over the years, criticism of the draconian nature of warranties has accumulated and the Law Commission of England and Scotland are currently considering the reform of insurance contract law with particular reverence to the law on warranties. At the same time, the English court have made enormous effort to mitigate the harshness of insurance warranties. At one level, the English court have tried to make a distinction between promissory warranties and delimiting warranties or descriptive warranties and to make the latter only have a suspensive effect, the breach of which will only suspend to the cover temporarily. At another level, the English court have attempted to construe warranties, both promissory warranties and delimiting warranties, in a purposive manner in accordance with their commercial common sense when being asked to ascertain that the particular warranty mean. This was well illustrated in the recent court of appeal judgment in John Pratt v. Agin Insurance Company S.A which has handed down on 27 November 2008. The dispute, Mr. Pratt took out a policy of marine insurance with Agin through brokers for his fishing trawler. The hull and missionary policy contained a warranty which stated warranted owner and or owner's experienced skipper on board and in charge at all time and one experienced crew member. On 11 December 2006, Mr. Pratt and his crew of three took the vessel to fish for a day and returned to North Shield at about 20 hours. The crew landed the catch and redid the vessel for fishing for the next day. Then Mr. Pratt and the crew left the vessel to go home and or meet friends. The vessel was found to be on fire and later investigation showed that the cause was the operation or malfunction of the deep fat fryer or the fright. There was no crew on board when the fire occurred and the generator was left running while the crew was ashore. Aiken declined Mr. Pratt's claim and submitted that there was no owner or experienced skipper on board and in charge at all time or specifically at the time of the fire by which there was a breach of the warranty. Mr. Pratt submitted that the clause was obviously directed to period when the vessel was navigating or working and, if applied literally, would lead to absurd results. Agen were prepared to concede that the term was suspensory rather than a true warranty, but that didn't affect the outcome in any way because the fire occurred while the vessel was not crewed. Decision of HHG Mackey QC At first instance, the court ruled at Aigen's favor. HHG Mackey QC held that the natural and literal meaning of the word required that the owner of the owner's experienced skipper must be on board and in charge at all time and that mean all the time. HHG Mackey QC further held that some qualification to the literal meaning of on board at all time should be allowed. However, following the Milasan 2000, 
and the Newfoundland Explorer 2006, where similar wording were held by the English court to require that the skipper or crew should be on board at all times subject to emergencies requiring departure from the vessel or for the purpose of carrying out other crewing duties or related activities. Mackie QC held that the qualification to the literal wording should be only that required by commercial common sense and it should not go further than the one stipulated in the Newfoundland Explorer. A side point, Mickey QZ believed that there was no ambiguity about the warranty clause in dispute, except as to whether the one experienced crew member must also be on board and in charge at all times. However, he considered this irrelevant to the dispute. Interestingly, the Court of Appeal disagreed on this point and this led them to reach a different decision after reading the wording with the rest of the clause as a whole. Decision of the Court of Appeal On appeal, it was common ground, as it was at first instance, that the disputed clause was a delimiting warranty, a breach of which doesn't automatically cancel the cover for good but only means that the underwriters are not on risk for as long as the insured doesn't comply with its term. The Court of Appeal focused on the construction of the disputed warranty and, in particular, on how far the expression at all times should be qualified. Sir Anthony Clark M.R., delivering the leading judgment, held that any clause in a contract must be construed having regard to its contact within the contract, which must in turn be set in its surrounding circumstance or factual metrics. In this regard, he examined the general principles of construction of contract in the recent authorities and also echoed the command by Lord Steen in Serious Insurance Cooperation versus FAI Insurance 2004 that there has been a shift from literal method of interpretation toward a more commercial approach. After applying the above principle to the fact, Sir Anthony Clark M.R. distinguished the present case from the Millison and the Newfoundland Explorer by reading the warranty clauses as a whole with reference to an one experienced crew member. In particular, he held that the primary or underlying purpose of the warranty was to protect the vessel against navigational hazard in circumstances in which at least two members of the crew, the skipper and one other, could be expected to be on board. Disagreeing with the first instant job, Sir Anthony Clark M.R. believed that there was ambiguity in the warranty clause and therefore held that the clause should be construed contra pro forentum against the insurer. He held that the principal time when at least two members of the crew, including the skipper, would be required was when the vessel was being navigated, including when she was maneuvering, and that if the insurer wanted the owner and an experienced crew member on board whenever the vessel was left with the generator still running, it should clearly have provided so.